Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the annual general meeting of the College of Licensed Practical Nurses of Alberta. I'm Laura Schneider, Executive Officer at the CLPNA and your host for today. Today's meeting is available with closed captioning and is being recorded to be shared with those unable to attend. We have approximately 380 people registered for this event. For this virtual gathering, we acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories in Alberta of the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. On the screen, you will see our agenda for today. You may submit questions in the chat and we will address those applicable during the Q&A at the end of this presentation. Questions will be visible to the speakers only and not to attendees. Please add your email address to your question. And if we run out of time, we will follow up directly with you by email. Please keep your questions and comments professional. And about the CLPNA's annual report, our projects and other regulatory topics. If we encounter any technical difficulties on our end, we will try to let you know and resolve them as quickly as we can. Thank you for your patience. It's now my pleasure to introduce the CLPNA's Council President, Curtis Koiker. Curtis Pre previously served as Council Vice President and began his term as President in September of 2021. Curtis has been an LPN for 16 years, has experience as a practical nurse instructor, and also has previous board and council experience. Please welcome Curtis Koiker. Good morning. And I would officially like to call this meeting to order. Uh, I am Curtis Koiker, and I am honored to serve as president of the College of Licensed Practical Nurses of Alberta and to be here today for the 2022 annual general meeting. The minutes for the 2021 annual general meeting were reviewed by Shana Mallets and have been approved as being a clear description of the meeting. I'm now going to describe for you how the CLPNA and the Council perform their roles. As health professionals, LPNs are regulated by the Health Professions Act. This legislation gives the CLPNA the ability to govern and regulate the profession by setting and maintaining standards in education, registration, conduct, and continuing competence so that public receives safe, competent and ethical healthcare services from LPNs. The CLPNA's mission is to regulate in a manner that promotes excellence so that Albertans have confidence in the care they receive from LPNs throughout their personal healthcare journey. The CLPNA is governed by a council which consists of members of the profession and government app appointed, pardon me, public members. Each council member brings a unique perspective where individually or collectively, uh, we possess the skills necessary to establish an effective competency board. The council is responsible for the governance and oversight of the CLPNA. The Council entrusts the operations of the CLPNA to the Chief Executive Officer through a policy governance model. The CLPNA uses the policy governance model to define and guide the relationships between the Council, the CEO, and the public. So essentially, the Council sets high-level rules and boundaries of prudence and ethics for the CEO to follow. 
the CEO operates within these rules and boundaries with regular reporting back to the council. As you can see, an effective council is a critical component for the overall direction of the CLPNA. I would like to take a, a moment to share some activities of the council during this last year. In April, 2021, Linda Osinchuk, Crystal Phillips, and Larry Fitchner joined the council as public members. As well, in September, 2021, myself, Ashley Cesar, who stepped in as vice president, Chloe Kilkenny, and David Hastrap began our new roles on the CLPNA council. We were welcomed by the experienced, diverse team of regulated and public members on the Council. The Council also underwent significant changes in 2021. Bill 30 of the Health Statutes Amendment Act, passed in July 2020, required all health professional regulatory colleges in Alberta to increase public member representation on their councils, hearing tribunals, and complaints review committees. In 2021, the CLPNA fulfilled this legislative change and welcomed the shift. As part of these changes, on April 1st, 2021, the CLPNA Council changed the composition and size of council membership in response to Bill 30. The CLPNA Council increased public representation from 25% to 50% of the total council membership. To comply with these changes, the council is now composed of six public members and six regulated members. The council also passed a motion to discontinue district elections and move to a competency-based appointment process. The composition and appointment changes uh, create a more transparent a representative council to lead the CLPNA. Furthermore, the council also said goodbye to former president Valerie Pace in 2021. In her nine years on council with five as president, Valerie made a significant impact at the CLPNA and in LPN regulation. The CLPNA and council are grateful for her years of leadership and passionate service to the CLPNA, and we wish her well in her new endeavors. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact the public and healthcare providers provincially, nationally, and globally. And we are grateful to our registrants for their continued dedication to safety in this ever-changing environment. I'm honored to serve as president of the CLPNA, along with the dedicated LPNs and public members of the council. Thank you to each council member for their work that they do and the time that they commit um, this past year and in the years to come. For the next agenda item for today's AGM, I now welcome Jeannie Weiss, the CLPNA's CEO, to discuss the work of the CLPNA in 2021. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Curtis, for the Council update and highlight of the changes ahead. I now invite you to watch a brief video of the 2021 Annual Report. Welcome to this presentation of the College of Licensed Practical Nurses of Alberta 2021 Annual Report. We are pleased to inform that registration numbers continue to rise in 2021 with a 6.2% growth ending the year with a total of 18,750 LPN registrants. A priority for registration in 2021 was to continue to offer clear, fair and consistent registration processes. Moving registration applications online improved access for LPNs seeking reinstatement, those from out of province, internationally educated nurses and for Alberta new graduates. Passing the Canadian Practical Nurse Registration Examination is the final step required for those on a provisional register to obtain full registration with the CLPNA. The Alberta annual average for Canadian first-time writers was 90%. 
the national average for Canadian first-time writers was 85%. Internationally educated nurses who wrote the CPNRE through Alberta had an 84% average pass rate. As the pandemic extended into 2021, the registration process was continuously reviewed to find ways to streamline applications for LPNs. Some of these initiatives included developing a more efficient approach to courtesy registration, including working with organizations like Alberta Health Services, the Red Cross, and many travel nursing agencies to ensure an expedited registration process. The Conduct Department at the CLPNA receives, investigates, manages, and resolves complaints made against regulated members. Public safety is the priority, and we are committed to efficiency and transparency in all conduct processes. In 2021, the CLPNA responded to complaints on average within 1.5 business days. Complaints were handled within the timeliness specified by the HPA and the procedures outlined by the CLPNA. During the COVID-19 pandemic, investigations were managed remotely by phone or video conference to align with Alberta Health's COVID-19 guidelines. As of 2019, all hearing decisions are published and available to the public on the CLPNA website in alignment with legislative requirements. Licensed practical nurses gain and maintain competence through education over the lifespan of their careers. Continuing competence is essential in meeting the demands of evolving practice environments and patient needs, and the CLPNA's Continuing Competence Program provides LPNs with a framework for assessing their individual competence. LPNs demonstrate their commitment to continuing competence through the CLPNA's Continuing Competence Program an annual review process in which LPNs assess, monitor, and reflect on their nursing practice. The CLPNA provides ongoing education to support the continuing competence of LPNs. In 2021, this included 39 webinars covering a variety of topics with fitness to practice and mental health and wellness as a main focus related to the impact of the pandemic on frontline healthcare providers, including LPNs. The Education Standards Advisory Committee continues to monitor all approved programs compliance with the education standards through regularly scheduled reviews and annual report submissions. All reviews conducted during 2021 were completed using a virtual platform. CLPNA's Learning Management System recorded more than 20,000 completions of the learning modules throughout the year. Topics included understanding restricted activities, immunization, administering blood and blood products, and more. Many documents representing the ongoing efforts of the CLPNA to maintain a high regulatory standard for the licensed practical nurse profession were released or updated in 2021 including four registrant policies, two information sheets, one interpretive document, and three existing documents that were redacted. In response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the CLPNA continued to provide updates through COVID-19 information sheets, providing information related to LPN practice. There were 2,343 practice consultations in 2021. These consultations varied in topic and complexity, including clarification of LPN scope of practice, regulatory expectations, standards of practice and professional responsibilities, and pandemic-related concerns from registrants, stakeholders, and the public. In 2021, CLPNA launched the Department of Performance Measurement and Research. This department continued to build its measurement system to lay out the strategic alignment through all levels of the organization. The team collaborated on several projects with CLEAR and the University of Calgary. The CLPNA also provided grant research funds to Dr. Jennifer Jackson from the University of Calgary to conduct a study on the experiences of becoming a regulated profession, a qualitative interpretive description interview study of healthcare aides. This study will take place over a two-year period starting in early 2022. 
the CLPNA grew its workforce in 2021 as it onboarded nine permanent staff, as well as several temporary professionals. In addition, the CLPNA has made significant strides in its commitment towards diversity, equity, and inclusion. With the formation of an internal DEI committee in December of 2020 and the engagement of an external consultant in 2021 to support the development of DEI education for staff, leadership, and council. With safety remaining the priority, the CLPNA continued to support staff to work remotely to deliver operational services to members and the public. The CLPNA kept current and up to date on the COVID 19 pandemic as well as related best practice and legal advice to best support and inform decisions on pandemic protocols, policies, and fostering a positive remote work culture. As a regulator, communications are critical to our operations to ensure that LPNs understand the role of the CLPNA and their registration, continuing competence, and conduct requirements as a regulated professional. It is also important that we communicate with the public regarding their safety in the healthcare system. In 2021, Care Magazine evolved to adapt to regulation changes stemming from Bill 46. Care released a new media kit and remapped the magazine to become more regulatory in focus. The fall winter edition of Care was the last printed edition of the publication. Moving into 2022, Care will be a digital magazine. Throughout the pandemic, communicating regulatory information to CLPNA registrants and the public in digital format was more important than ever. The CLPNA continues to administer the Alberta Healthcare Aid Directory and recognizes that healthcare aides are an important part of Alberta's frontline healthcare workforce. The directory collects relevant HCA demographics, employment statistics, and the attainment of core competencies. Healthcare aides in Alberta enrolled on the directory must be maintained through an annual renewal process. Renewal was previously held from April 1st to June 30th. However, in 2021, due to the announcement of HCA regulation, the renewal was changed to September 1st through November 30th. Consequently, the usual 12 month renewal period was extended to 17 months. At the end of 2021 renewal period, 29,178 HCAs were renewed. Information regarding the CLPNA financial highlights for 2021 are included in the annual report published on the CLPNA's website. The CLPNA is a progressive regulatory body actively pursuing regulatory excellence, strengthening processes using best evidence procedural fairness and transparency, while remaining efficient and fiscally responsible. Complete financial statements are available by contacting the CLPNA directly. The comprehensive 2021 annual report provides additional information and can be accessed online at clpna.com. Thank you. As you can see from the annual report, the CLPNA has continued to be responsive through 2021 with an ongoing commitment to public safety. As I shared in this year's annual report, three words come to mind as I reflect on 2021. Challenge, resiliency, and strength. These words are reflective of the organization, the health system we support, our registrants, our stakeholders, and what we've seen globally. This past year, CLPNA finalized the 2022 to 2025 strategic plan that sets the stage for significant changes ahead, which include the regulation of healthcare aids. We continue the work of focusing on improving our regulatory functions and processes, developing a regulatory evaluation framework and shifting our operations to accommodate a second profession. We continue to work with provincial and national stakeholders to better support labour mobility of registrants and continue to make this a priority both for international and out of province applicants. The CLPNA approved a fee reduction for courtesy registration applicants, 
along with an expedited process for registration that supports the applicant to be promptly registered and available for the workforce. We also implemented a non-regulated student membership, which creates a channel to share regulatory information with students throughout their practical nurse program. This can support the student's understanding of regulation and its requirements as they transition into a regulated professional. The CLPNA approved two new practical nurse refresher programs with the first graduates expected in early 2022. We're committed to diversity, equity and inclusion and are taking deliberate and sustained action by creating a multi-year DEI roadmap that aligns to our goals with clear measures of success. And as we move into 2022, we continue to streamline our processes and policies at the CLPNA to support registrants to be competent, ethical and safe practitioners. With the continuation of public health restrictions in 2021 and keeping the safety of our team and those we serve a priority, the CLPNA continued remote working with appointments being available as needed. In 2020, Bill 46 introduced the future regulation of healthcare aides as a separate profession within the CLPNA. With this change, the CLPNA will become one college with two distinctive professions licensed practical nurses and healthcare aides. Along with the administration of the HCA directory, the CLPNA also continues to work with Alberta Health to support HCA practice by managing the provincial exam and performing educational program reviews for institutions delivering the HCA curriculum. As mentioned, we're continuing the planning for future regulation of healthcare aides and look forward to welcoming HCAs when proclaimed. Reflecting on the challenges and changes we experienced in 2021, I also want to take a moment to express great gratitude. Throughout the pandemic, we have witnessed endless devotion, courage, and responsiveness of all healthcare workers, caregivers, and essential workers. I extend a heartfelt thank you to licensed practical nurses, healthcare aides, and all healthcare providers across the province for your dedication and commitment to providing safe and compassionate care to Albertans during these difficult times. Thank you to our council members for their dedication over the past year, and thank you to the CLPNA staff for your resilience and strength as a team. Thank you, Curtis and Jeannie. The CLPNA did not receive any resolutions this year, so we will move on to the Q&A. One of the benefits of an AGM is an opportunity for registrants and stakeholders to speak directly to us regarding the work of our regulatory college. Our president, Curtis Koiker, and CEO, Jeannie Weiss, will now take time to respond to some of these questions. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. And thank you all for submitting questions for us today, um, both prior to the AGM as well as in the chat. So um, Curtis and I will move through and we'll start um, answering and, and thank you for taking the time. It really expands on some of our, our knowledge and some of the work that we've done in the past year, as well as what's coming ahead. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start us off. Um, we've had several questions that were submitted regarding wages, labor relations, employer conditions, and advocating for the licensed practical nurse. I'm going to answer these collectively. Um, we talked a little bit about it in the, in the presentation as well. So CLPNA is the regulatory college of licensed practical nurses in Alberta. So as a regulator, the CLPNA exists to protect the public. So we set the education and registration standards, those requirements that are needed for registration renewal, 
We maintain a public database to identify registration status and provide information to LPNs about practice standards, as well as guidelines to support safe practice. So with that, the Health Professions Act, or the HPA, uh, requires a clear separation between regulatory functions that protect the public and those that are related to salary negotiations, economics, nursing advocacy, and social standing of registrants of the profession. So there's a true delineation of that when it comes to our responsibilities. So unlike the regulator, a union would establish those bargaining relationships to promote labor relations between the employees and employers. The unions work with the condition of employment, such as wages, benefits, conditions of work and job security, as well as grievances and labor issues. So in non-union organizations, those factors are managed directly between the employer and the employee. So to better understand the role of the association, CLPNA as a regulator, as well as the union, please um, connect with our CLPNA website. Uh, we have some great resources there and can contact us use, using the Ask CLPNA form. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Jeannie. Um, I'll answer a couple more questions that have come up in, um, in our chats as well. Uh, it looks like the first one here is, um, what are the regulatory requirements for LPNs providing immunizations? And um, this one kind of goes along the lines of uh, any LPN uh, that has the education, uh, the training, and individual competence to administer immunizations safely are authorized under the LPN regulation to administer vaccines where the uh, recipient of that immunization is five years or older. Um, so that was, uh, that's been a shift for us in our immunizations there. Um, and then it looks like question two here is as related to restricted activities uh, for an LPN, uh, what CLPNA learning modules are considered mandatory? Um, the uh, first mandatory or a mandatory uh, module is the understanding uh, restricted activities. Uh, this uh, learning module is actually mandatory to all LPNs uh, before June 30th, 2022. Uh, additionally, uh, if an LPN is uh, required to perform medication administration uh, via a CVC, a PIC, or an IVAD, or administering um, any um, prenatal, oh my goodness, per I can't even say the word right now, Jeannie. This is what happens. Uh, <laughs> parental, parental nutrition. <laughs> yeah. Parental nutrition. I need to get back to the floor apparently. Uh, it's required um, that they complete the related CLPNA modules uh, and have advanced authorization before performing these in practice. Um, so ensure that if you're doing any of those uh, that you're also uh, looking at those modules as well, please. Thanks Curtis. And you know, we just got a question pop up in the chat just about those modules. So. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to attack that um, quickly. Is there is a question about can an LPN working in long-term care take the blood products learning module? Um, those learning modules within the uh, learning management system for a licensed practical nurse are available for all of you. So please, you know, in order to increase your competency to um, support your learning and ensure that uh, you know, your readiness in order to perform these activities. And even if you're not, it's a great refresher. So we encourage you, um, if you have questions, please connect with our professional development department and they can help you uh, navigate through some of these modules, but any of those and all of those are available for to, to support nursing practice. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll tackle the next uh, one if, if you're okay uh, with that. Um, Curtis, and there's a lot of questions. I would say the bulk of our questions sitting in the chat have to do with um, healthcare aids and, and regulation. And 
so I'm once again, I'm just going to try and bring all those questions together and try and answer um, many to, together with with one response. But we understand that more questions and more responses are yet to come. So overall, the key question is why are healthcare aides part of the CLPNA portfolio? So licensed practical nurses and HCAs, they have different duties. Um, we have several questions in regards to this. So legislation has identified that CLPNA would be the regulatory body for healthcare aid. So this is under Bill 46, which we, uh, Curtis mentioned it a little bit earlier today. So it also um, mentioned that uh, CLPNA will be the regulator for healthcare aids and will regulate two distinct separate professions but under one regulatory body. So this means that healthcare aids, once it's proclaimed, will become health professions under the Health Professions Act. They'll have requirements for regulated practice. All of those are set forth in the act for the profession. So just like CLPNA does for licensed practical nurses, they'll establish those similar requirements for entry to practice in the healthcare aid profession However, planning is underway because oh, the timing of this has not yet been determined and all details have not been, um, have not been determined and, and uh, put into the planning stage yet. So right now, the college is engaging with stakeholders to gain feedback uh, from multiple stakeholders um, as we continue our planning for HCA regulation. So more will be shared as the planning continues, but the intent is that the healthcare aides will be a distinct profession under the CLPNA. Um, I'm just gonna take a, a, another look at the, the chat and I see a lot of questions related to practice. And um, I, you know, I want to encourage if anybody has questions specific about their practice or the can I do questions, uh, is this appropriate in, in my workplace? I am going to, um, bring forth that we do have practice consultants that are able to answer your questions specifically to your context. And all of your questions today, um, if they're related to practice, will move to the practice area and they can connect with you um, directly and, and answer those specific questions. Um, and I think this overall captures um, most of the the pieces within within the, the chat um, at this time. And, you know, there is a lot of questions about advocacy, advocacy for healthcare aides and licensed practical nurses. And I think we've clarified the role of the regulatory body. And, you know, one good place to learn a little bit more about that is the website, but also that um, understanding restricted activities module um, and really understand who, who the regulator is in the association as, as well as uh, the union um, and as well as the activities that a regulator you know, may um, engage in. And that's the setting the standards and providing guidance and policies and standards of practice and code of ethics. So there's a little bit of differentiation. And I know we have a great graphic. We saw it earlier in the presentation, but you can see it a little larger and talk about it uh, with our practice consultant if you choose, um, if you have questions, uh, more questions in that area. So otherwise, I'm going to thank everybody for the questions and bring it back to Laura. This brings our Q&A to a close. Questions we were unable to answer will be responded to by email if you provided your contact email in the chat. Remember, you can submit questions anytime on our website through the Ask CLPNA form. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. We appreciate your participation. This session was recorded and will be shared on the CLPNA website you will receive a notification through the CLPNA weekly newsletter. If you don't receive the newsletter, please sign up on the CLPNA website.
Okay, so uh, this brings the 2022 uh, annual general meeting uh, officially to a close. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining us today.